In this video, we're going to talk about arrays and ranges, and mostly focus on indexing using nested loops and how it works. So, let, first of all, let's get into arrays. Uh, an array is a way to structure multiple pieces of data of the same type, so they're readily available for different kinds of operations. So they are a lot like ranges, and like with ranges, you can perform operations on them efficiently using loops. Now you may say, um, why use arrays at all when you already have ranges? Well, there's a couple of good reasons. Um, you might not want to actually use a sheet in the workbook to do your calculations. When you use an array, it's self-contained, and you don't have to expose the um, innards of the calculation, so to speak, to the user. But um, another reason is it's much, much faster, typically, to use an array as opposed to a range because you don't have the overhead of writing to and reading from the worksheet. You also might want three or more div dimensions, and with ranges, two dimensions is the most you can use conveniently. Okay, so how do we declare an array in Visual Basic? Well, here's the declaration of a regular variable where we have dim, the name of the variable, which I just named name, as a string, let's say, or whatever type, and here's the declaration of an array. Now, I want to say an array can have any name. It doesn't have to have the word array in it. I just did that for clarity. And what you do is you put a number in parentheses in addition to the rest of the declaration, and that tells Visual Basic that you want an array. Now, what this does is it creates an array um, with 20 elements, and they're indexed from 1 to 20. Um, you can set things up to start numbering at 0 instead of 1, but typically we won't do that. Most people are more comfortable starting with 1 until they've done a lot of programming. Now, there's some alternate arrays. Um, for example, you can explicitly put the lower limit in, so 1 to 20, or you, can, you don't have to start at 1. Here's one where I wanted to index by years, so I started with 1955 and I went to 2020. So um, you can have a different lower bound than one if you want to. Now, a variable is a place to store value. Basically, it's a location in the computer's memory. And you reference that memory location using the name of the variable. Well, with an array, you're, you're storing a bunch of values. In our example, 20 values, or however many you're going to have um, in your array, and you get access to those by using not just the name of the array, but also the index. So here's a picture of what a single variable looks like, um, and it has a value in it. And here's an array that has six elements, and each one has a value in it. And if I want to get the value, say, of the third one or set it, I do it by using the number three in parentheses after the name of the array. So here, num array three, index three, has value 3.5. Okay, now there's a couple things to watch out for with arrays. You must not try to put more things in the array than what there's space for. If you index beyond the limits of the array, you're likely to get a runtime error. If you're lucky, the worst case is, uh, Visual Basic just writes into that location and doesn't tell you anything's wrong and wipes out something else that you were counting on being there. It could be code, it could be data. In either case, it's bad. Um, you should also not try to retrieve elements to index beyond the end of the array um, on the right side where, where you're getting values. And again, um, you should get a runtime. You should get a runtime error, but Worst case, you won't. You'll just get some weird value that it picked up from whatever was in the memory following the location where your array is. So be careful about that. Now try to make your array big enough to handle the foreseeable amount of data that you want to put in it. In a lot of languages, you have to decide on the front side how big the array is going to be, and you're out of luck if you misjudge. But in um, Visual Basic, we have redim. So, for example, I, uh, here's an example array, and if I find out that it's too big at some time when my program is running, I can use a redim statement 
of example array 1, 2, whatever the new size is that I want it to be. Using preserve makes it keep the values that are already in there. So if I'm doing a redim before I start using it, um, then it doesn't matter. But if I've already been using it, then I want to preserve the values. And this is how you do it. You can also have what's called a dynamic array. You declare it initially like this um, without putting anything at all in the parentheses. The parentheses tell Visual Basic that it's going to be a uh, an array. And then when you know how big it is, use redim to actually set it up. And um, this used information from exceltip.com, which I found to be actually a very helpful website with information about Excel. Okay, now you can have more than one dimension. This is the array version of nesting. And in some languages, you actually have an array of arrays. Um, in Visual Basic, you have a different way of doing it. It's a two-dimensional array. And here's an example. So array 1 to 3, 1 to 4 as integer sets up an array with three rows and four columns, 12 items at all. And here's an example of how I would set an element of this array. For example, element 1, 2, row 1, 2 is set to 20. This shows a picture of what it's like. Um, here I've set up a picture with a space for every element. And here is row 1, column 2, with the value 20 inside it. OK, now um, what I'm going to do is show you a demo where I uh, work with arrays. And let's get over to that. It's going to, sh to illustrate indexing with two dimensions and with one dimension. And since it's easiest to see what's happening when we use ranges and it actually shows up um, on the worksheet, we'll be doing a lot of that. So the first thing we do is copy an array to a range. And here's an example. So I'm setting up two dimensions. Uh, one is 8 and one is 10 using constants. I'm declaring an array, 1 to dim 1, 1 to dim 2. So it has 8 rows and 10 columns. And here I'm declaring a range. And to set up a range, I do it when the workbook opens. And I, I'm calling the range 2D area. And you can see I'm making it go from the upper left corner, 1, 1, to the lower right corner, uh, cell dim 1, dim 2. So the array and the range are exactly the same shape. And here's the code to copy the range to an array. Um, it's a nested loop. I do the rows on the outside and the columns on the inside. And what I'm saying is, OK, I'm going to take cell of whatever row and column value um, index, take that value and put it into the range. Um, sorry, into the array. So this is the range made up of cells. And this is the array. OK, now I did rows on the outside, columns on the inside. For some reason, that's customary. You don't have to do it th that way. And um, this one shows you filling the range, um, doing it by rows. So we start with count equals 1. And actually, I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So let's go over to the code here and to our um, uh, worksheet. And I'm going to fill the range working by rows. And what I did was I put an increasing number into each element. So you can see starting with 1, I went across and did the first 10 in the first row, then the next 10 in the next row, and so on. And if I take a look at the code here, um, here's copy array to range and copy range to array, which I was talking about before. And you can play with those and see how they work. Here I'm filling row by row with successive numbers. So um, I said count to 1. I have an outer loop on row, an inner loop on column. So I do all of row 1, letting um, the column number go from 1 up to the maximum. And then I do row 2 and so on, as you saw here. And you can tell the order they're going by the order the numbers showed up. Now let's clear that and fill it by columns instead. And now you can see the difference. I'm going down the columns with my first eight values, then my next eight, then my next eight, and so on. So I still have 80 values, but I put them in in a different order. 
And if you look at the code here for filling a range by columns, and you compare it to filling a range by rows, um, you'll see that this one simply differs in having the column index loop on the outside and the row index loop on the inside. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how to um, differentiate between those two orders of doing things and also how these uh, nested loops work. Okay, now the next thing I do, let's clear this, is fill the range with random numbers uh, between 1 and 6. Okay, so you can see those here. And um, let's look at the code for that. So here I, um, I'm again going by row on the outside, column on the inside. And what I do is simply um, set up the value. Oh, sorry, that's arbitrary random numbers. I set up the value um, to be a random number between 1 and 6 this way. The, the basic random numbers are between 0 and 1. And um, if I want an integer between 1 and 6, what I do is I take a basic random number, multiply it by 6, that gives me a number between uh, 0 and 5.999, and then basically I just um, add 1 to get a number between 1 and 6 and turn that into an integer. Okay, so um, over here I also have filling with regular random type numbers, which you can see here. And just to give you one more illustration, some of this code I'll let you just look at and play with on your own. But um, here what I want to do is normalize these rows. So what I'm doing here is, first of all, I go through and um, I get the sum of each row right here and then find the average value of the elements in each row and I subtract the average value of each row from each element in the row and I call that normalizing. So let's see here, you can see all the numbers here are between um, 0 and 1 and now if I normalize you'll see that they're between minus 1 and plus 1 and I did it row by row. So um, you can also see that I'm only uh, showing the five digits, four digits actually of the number. Um, actually the random number has quite a few digits. So this also shows you some basics of how to do random numbers using Visual Basic in Excel. Okay, so um, you should play around with this. Try modifying the code. Make sure you understand how rows and columns work. Um, have some fun.